Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here, back again, bringing you guys an update of the 2017 NFL playoffs. Today, guys, we're going to be taking a look at the divisional round. I'm going to be giving you guys my picks for each one of these four games that will be played this weekend. If you guys are enjoying this thing at any point in time, please do me a favor and drop a like and don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel as well. I typically do Madden content, but I'm enjoying doing these prediction videos as well, so we might see more of this type of stuff in the future as well. Thank you guys, first of all, for all the support on the first video that I did for this whole playoff thing. Uh, that was the most successful video that I've ever had on my channel. Yeah, there were a lot of comments saying how stupid I am and whatnot, but for the most part, I think most people were appreciative that I took the time to do it, and you guys at least liked it, you watched the video, so thank you so much for all the support on that. Now, with that said, let's hop into this thing because... We do have the new matchups for the divisional round. Um, now, first of all, guys, I do want to point out, yes, I did get every game right for the first round, the wild card round of the playoffs. Yes, I did pick Seattle. I picked Green Bay. I picked the Texans, and I picked Pittsburgh as well. So I am 4 for 4 going into this weekend. Not that that means a whole lot. Most people, I think, made those predictions for the first weekend of football for the playoffs. But this weekend's games are going to be a little bit more interesting because we've got these teams that got a win coming out of the wild card weekend, and they're all going to be on the road this weekend as they head into the divisional round playoffs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in the order of the games as they're going to be seen this weekend. So we're going to start off in the top right corner of your screen. We're going to have Seattle headed to Atlanta to play the Falcons. Now, Seattle... In the first game of these playoffs, they looked like a different team, man. Defensively, absolutely shut down the Lions, did not let them do anything. They looked like the old Legion of Boom. Even without Earl Thomas, they looked excellent out there defensively, shutting down basically everything that they wanted to do. But the big story is that Seattle actually has a running game. Thomas Rawls ran all over that Detroit Lions defense. And suddenly, Seattle looks like a real contender here in the NFC. Seattle struggled in the regular season, but they always seem to be able to come around and make things happen in the playoffs. I said this in the previous video. These guys are just one of those teams that, for whatever reason, they just show up in big moments. Or they get downright lucky, like the Vikings missing that field goal. But... Seattle does have to go on the road to play a red-hot Atlanta team. That offense is absolutely legit. Definitely one of the best offenses in the league. Matt Ryan probably going to win MVP this year. If it's not him, maybe, maybe Aaron Rodgers, possibly Ezekiel Elliott. But I think beyond that, and, and I mean, of course, there's Tom Brady, but he missed four games, so I don't think that's a real possibility. But I really think that Matt Ryan might be getting that MVP award this year, and we'll see if he can carry it on into the playoffs. He doesn't have the best record in the playoffs, and I'm not just talking about wins and losses because I don't put that on a quarterback, but his actual stats in the playoffs just haven't been there. He hasn't really performed that well in the playoffs, and he's had those couple of those games where you really question if he's just ever going to put it together in the playoffs. So it's an interesting matchup here because he is definitely one of the best quarterbacks in the league this year. Their passing game is legit. Their running game is legit. Devonta Freeman, Tevin Coleman, those guys just know how to bruise and pick up the first downs, keep the offensive drives moving, and that passing game is so explosive. They've got two or three receivers on that roster who can go for a touchdown at any time, and of course, Julio Jones might be the most physically skilled receiver in the league right now. So, it's going to come down to if Seattle can contain that Atlanta offense, and I'm not sure that they can. Um, you look at it like this. The problem with this defense for Seattle is that they're very scheme dependent, and Atlanta has done a great job this year of attacking opposing schemes. They find the weakness in the opposing defense, and they exploit it, whether it's using Julio Jones, whether it's running the ball, whether it's getting ta Taylor Gabriel the ball. There are a bunch of different players that they can find in this offense to make plays for them, and it's going to be a problem for Seattle. I, I really think this is going to be a problem for Seattle. Now, can Seattle on the opposite side of the ball run the football and keep the ball out of Matt Ryan's hands? That's going to be interesting to see one way or another. 
I think this game is going to, like I said, come down to if Seattle can shut down, or I guess I shouldn't say shut down, slow down the Atlanta offense. Now, I personally do think that Seattle has what it takes. I think that they're going to have to change up their defense. They're not just going to be able to do what they typically do. They're going to have to bring heat from different spots on the field. They're going to have to potentially even move Richard Sherman around the field. If Julio Jones starts to get loose and he starts to put up some big numbers, they're just going to have to try and test if Richard Sherman has the skills to straight up line up against him every single play. And I think Pete Carroll has the guts to do that if it comes to it. So I'm, I'll be very interested to see what ends up happening regarding that. And in this game, I picked Seattle to move on. I do think Seattle, they're the current underdogs in this one by four points to five points, depending on where you look. And I do think, though, that they're just, they're going to look good in this one. Atlanta's going to have a tough time stopping their running game if they're going to do, if they do anything similar to what they did last week with blocking for Thomas Rawls. This game is completely different. It's completely different than the first game. And yes, Seattle did walk away with the win in that first game. Admittedly, there was a, ma a bad missed pass interference call that arguably could have changed the game. But still, I think that's a good point to bring up when you're looking at this game. It, it is an important thing to consider that Seattle does already have a win over Atlanta. Granted, again, that was in Seattle, not in Atlanta. So it is a little bit different. But still, Seattle has the stuff to beat Atlanta. And I think they're going to make it happen this weekend. So I am going to keep the Seahawks as my winner in that game. Moving on. We're going to go to the bottom left corner of your screen. We have the Houston Texans heading on the road to play the New England Patriots. Texans coming off a big win over the Raiders. It's not that Raiders team, though. Like, let's be completely honest here. That Raiders offense did not look like what we saw throughout the regular season. And how could it? You know, they were on their third string quarterback, a guy who is a rookie who really doesn't have any experience at all. I believe that was his first NFL start. Very, very limited snaps. I mean, this is that was not a good situation to to send him in. I mean, what could what could Oakland really do though? And quite frankly, Houston's defense was up to the task. I mean, not only did they control that game, they were scoring points practically for their offense. So I mean, that was a fairly easy victory for the Texans. That I don't think is going to be the case this weekend. Houston is going to be in trouble, in my opinion, in this matchup. They, again, are heading on the road in this one, which is a big differentiator from where they were last week in Houston. New England is one of the best teams, if not the best team, throughout the regular season this year. But one thing I will say is this. This game is currently a 16-point advantage from Vegas for the Patriots. 16-17 to 17 in some cases. That is ridiculous. Now, don't get me wrong. I am taking the Patriots to win this game, but a 16-point victory, that is completely disrespectful to the Houston defense, which has been one of the best defenses in the league this season. I believe that Houston is going to do a good job of keeping this game close, at least through the majority of it. I do think that the, the Patriots will walk away with the win, but I would not be surprised if this is a game in the fourth quarter, and I would be very hesitant to put points on New England covering that spread. I just do not think it's going to happen, man. I think that the Texans are going to do a great job of keeping this game close. Unfortunately, I believe that they are going to fall short. Tom Savage is back this week, though, so that could change things. But then again, they, the offense could be a little bit out of rhythm late, right now from what they had with Brock Osweiler last week. Granted, offense wasn't spectacular with Osweiler by any means, but you know it always is. It, it always is difficult to go from one quarterback to another, and especially when you have to do it against Tom Brady and the Patriots and Bill Belichick. That that just does not look good for the Texans. So again, I am going to take the Patriots in this one. On Sunday, we're going to see the game between the Steelers and the Chiefs. This is the rematch from week four, I believe it was, of the NFL season. The Steelers absolutely trounced the Chiefs. Now, granted, these were two different teams at that point in time. The Steelers were absolutely killing most of their opponents at that point, And the Chiefs were kind of middling in the middle of the pack in the AFC. The Chiefs have since obviously secured themselves as the two seed here in the AFC. They are the home team in this contest. But man, how could you not be thinking about that game if you're a Chiefs player heading into this one? The fact that 
really there wasn't a whole lot different in terms of the players that were on the field. Uh, you know, for the most part, same guys are going to be out there. It's not like the Chiefs were missing their quarterback. It's not like they were missing their running back. Well, granted, they were missing Jamal Charles, but, you know, Jamal Charles is still going to be out for this one. It's not like really there were a whole lot of changes. The one main difference, if you want to pick one out, is that Tyreek Hill is really looking like a beast. The problem is that I just don't believe the Chiefs are going to get him the ball enough to make a real impact in this game. The Steelers' defense this past week, they did what it took to take Jay Ajayi out of the game. Jay Ajayi was a non-factor last week, and that was after Jay Ajayi completely dominated them in the regular season. I think he ran for 200 or more yards in that game against the Steelers, and this past week, again, he was a non-factor. The Steelers know how to take the opposing team's number one weapon out of the game if they need to. And I believe that's going to be the case here. I think that they're going to look at Tyreek Hill and they're going to say, that guy's not beating us. We're going to punt the ball out of bounds. We're going to make it um, impossible for him to make plays as a returner. And when it comes to him being a receiver, he's just going to get blanketed. So what's going to end up happening is that if the Chiefs want to get the ball to Tyreek Hill, it's going to have to be on some short gimmicky plays. It's going to have to be wide receiver screens. You know, it's going to have to be end arounds potentially or line him up in the backfield and give him some handoffs. But the problem is that they haven't proven to do that on a consistent basis. This is a player who in the final three weeks of the regular season, when the Chiefs were still battling for playoff positioning, he touched the ball a total of 15 times on offense. That's not enough for a player like that. You need to give him the ball more if he's going to be a real difference maker, in my personal opinion. Now, granted, he is the type of player who, yeah, you could give him the ball once and he can go for a touchdown. We've seen that happen. But the chances of that happening consistently are just not great. I think that the Chiefs really need to make it an effort to get him the ball if they do that. We could see a completely different game here, but the problem is that the Chiefs offense just does not have the firepower that the Steelers offense does, and the Steelers, they look like a freaking powerhouse this past week on offense. Le'Veon Bell looks like the best running back in football right now. I mean, yeah, offensively, the Steelers are dominant. Antonio Brown, we know he's among the best, if not the best wide receiver in the NFL, and so the Chiefs just do not have the players on offense to combat that. In order for the Chiefs to win this game, their defense is going to have to be on its just absolute best moments of the whole season. They're going to have to be playing their best football that they have in years in order to win this game, in my opinion. So I'm not sure that that's going to happen. I am going to go ahead and go with the slight underdog here. Right now, the Chiefs are about a one to two point favorite. I am going to take the Steelers to win this one. I believe that they're going to get the job done. And I quite frankly believe that they're going to be a potential threat to the Patriots in the AFC. They might be the only threat to the Patriots in the AFC, in fact. But we have one final game. This will be the Sunday night football game between the Dallas Cowboys hosting the the Green Bay Packers. Now, you guys know, if you watched my previous video, I am a Dallas Cowboys fan, and I don't make any, uh, you know, qualms about it. Uh, this is the reality is I am a Dallas Cowboys fan. However, that does not necessarily skew my opinion. I am somebody that is capable of looking at these games and deciding based on what I see on the field, who is going to win. And going into the season, I will tell you guys, I had the Cowboys as maybe a seven-win team. So, and, and obviously, when Tony Romo went down, that dropped significantly as well. So I am surprised to see them where they are, based on what my opinion was at the beginning of the season. This isn't about being a homer. But the Dallas Cowboys are one of the best teams in the league. I don't think there's really any questioning that. Yeah, they're one of those teams that pretty much everybody hates unless you're a Cowboys fan, but you have to give them the respect that they deserve. But on the other side of the football, we have a team in the Green Bay Packers who absolutely slaughtered the New York Giants. There were fans of the Giants in my comment section on my previous prediction video that were telling me that the Giants were going to go the whole way, not just beat the, the Packers, not just go into Dallas and beat the Cowboys, not to beat Atlanta, 
but to go to the Super Bowl and beat who most people assumed is going to represent the AFC, the New England Patriots, again in the Super Bowl. That team, that Giants team that people were telling me was going to go the whole way, got absolutely slaughtered by the Packers. The Packers look like a great team, and it wasn't just the Hail Mary. It wasn't just the fact that that defense looked damn good, but it was the fact that they're a functioning football team as a whole right now. However, they're going into Dallas. This is a very different situation from what we saw this past week where the Packers had the home field advantage in Lambeau. They have to go on the road right now and play in a completely different environment in Dallas. Weather is not going to be a factor. This is not going to be a situation where you're going to see Green Bay and uh, they've got the advantage because they just know how to play in cold weather. Nope. Dallas is the team that is going to have the advantage here based on the fact that it is in Dallas. The home field advantage, of course, the Cowboys fans are going to be wild. And I think that the Cowboys, again, have the stuff to beat the Packers. This is probably the most difficult to predict game in my personal opinion. Because I think it could go either way. Would I be surprised if Aaron Rodgers puts the team on his back and walks away with the victory in this one? Absolutely not. But would I be surprised if it's fairly similar to how this first game went between Dallas and Green Bay when the Cowboys walked into Green Bay and beat the Packers by 14? No, I wouldn't be surprised at that either. Because Dallas has had two weeks to prepare for this game. Their team, This team is as healthy as it has been all season right now. And it's hard to beat a team that has had that much time to prepare and a team that is healthy. And the Cowboys, not only are they healthy, not only are they going to be prepared for this football game, but they're also dominant in two aspects of football, running the football and shutting down the run. And that's where Green Bay is going to struggle, in my opinion, in this football game. Green Bay cannot run the football on Dallas. If it happens... Call me a liar. It's very possible that I will get that prediction wrong, but here's the deal. Green Bay's running offense, aside from maybe one or two performances from Ty Montgomery this season, it's been terrible. It's been terrible. And the Dallas Cowboys have the number one ranked run defense from the regular season this year. And not only that, but they have the number one running back on the opposite side of the field in Ezekiel Elliott. And I'm not talking about skills-wise. We're not going to get into that debate. I'm talking about pure rushing yardage. Ezekiel Elliott led the league by a pretty wide margin this year. And so when you look at it like that, and you consider the fact that Aaron Rodgers is going to have to be extraordinarily efficient, I just think Dallas has what it takes to win this football game. I am going to take the Cowboys. Call me a homer all you want. But it's just a situation where I look at it. Dallas is a four and a half point favorite. So it's not just me being a homer. Other people agree. I am going to take the Cowboys in this one. And so there you have it. The four teams that are going to be representing their conferences in the AFC and NFC championships. We're going to have in the NFC, the Dallas Cowboys hosting the Seattle Seahawks. And in the AFC, we are going to have the New England Patriots hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this weekend's predictions? Do you guys agree with me? Where do you disagree? Don't just call me a homer. Don't just say I'm biased, please. Let's be a little bit smarter than that. I gave you actual reasons. So, let's have a good conversation in the comments section below. Let me know what you guys think about these predictions. And not only that, but I want to hear from you guys. What happens from here on out? Beyond just this weekend's games, who wins in the AFC and NFC championship games? And then who is going to be your Super Bowl champions? Let me know in the comments section below, guys. Be sure to like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And guys, if you can, help me out. Share the video, whether it be on Facebook, whether it be on Twitter, uh, whatever other forms of social media that you guys have. Share it with a friend. Let me know what you guys think about it, though, in the comments section below. That is very important because I have fun conversing with you guys as long as the comments are respectable. So thanks again so much for all the support on the previous video. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this one as well. Thanks again for all the support. Talk to you guys again soon.